I just thought, I thought it was brilliant. I laughed out loud so great. many times. I good, have good. To say. Have you seen the whole thing? Yeah. Ask? Yeah. Okay, great. It's so good. Um, so can you tell me how you came up with the storyline in the first place? I'm assuming pesky be at a picnic. Or... Yes, it would started as a house sitter story actually. To be honest, you know, just the idea of what would it be like if a if a very wealthy couple with a very fabulous house containing very priceless objects left it to someone who was unqualified, uh, f f you know, for the job of house sitting. Because house sitting is so odd. How, you know, people, even very, very wealthy and successful people, trust you yeah. to sit in their house. You know, they trust their house to complete strangers. And then we thought, well, that's quite interesting because, you know, things could go wrong. But what could go wrong? Or how or why could they go wrong? And then we thought, what about a bee? What about introducing a bee, you know, which, with which our character becomes obsessed? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the essence of of the story but we we wanted to create a, a sort of slightly more rounded more three-dimensional sort of nicer character than many I've played you know nicer than Mr Bean yeah. <laughs> you know less smug and obsessed than Johnny English so we, we wanted um, you know to create someone new and, and so Trevor, Trevor Bingley that, that's his name yeah. um, is the guy in this house and he's actually a very sweet-natured family guy who slightly lost his family uh, he's, he's got an ex-wife and a teenage daughter. The teenage daughter he was supposed to be going on holiday with in the very week he gets this job. Uh, so sorry, that's a potted history of how we arrived at the story and sort of, and sort of told you the I story as well. it would be a thing that you've never gotten over. But. No, no, I wish I could say I'm determined to get, <laughs> to get one over on the bee community, no. Um, so, like you say, Trevor tries to catch this bee under a glass, ties it up with some trousers, whisks it, cooks mm -hmm. it, tries to do everything he possibly can. Mm -hmm. In your professional opinion, what is the best way to escape from a bee's clutches? Oh, I, I, don't, well, I think just do the traditional things. You know, put it under a glass and don't leave the glass. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, and put it outside. Yeah. yeah, that is how you should do with a bee. <laughs> but that's the problem. That's And that's... Well, it's the fact, or just leave it alone. Yeah. Actually, generally speaking, bees are very benign. You know, they can sting you, but they almost certainly won't. No. Uh, so either leave it alone or, or deal with it in a humane fashion. But that's the problem. You know, the character of Trevor Bingley decides to do sort of neither of those things. <laughs> you know, you just ask yourself, why are you getting so worked up about this bee? Yeah. Just leave it alone or ignore it or something. But he he's an obsessive. That That turns out to be his... Yeah. Fault line. He's a really nice guy, ordinary man, yeah. but he's got a fault line, and the fault line is he becomes obsessed with things. Um, so in the show, it's no secret that a few things get broken. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever broken something, either as an adult or growing up, and got away with it? Uh, and got away with it. <laughs> I've never got away with a break. <laughs> uh, I hope I've always been honest and admitted if I break. Yeah, yeah the main thing I've broken probably is cars I've broken a few cars by crashing them so that's but then of course they're not you know they're my cars yeah <laughs> and it's usually I think always actually been my fault <laughs> so I can't say that oh if that guy hadn't done that I wouldn't have crash the car. Yeah. No, generally speaking, it's been me crashing the car. <laughs> and the house is filled with like amazing gadgets mm -hmm. and gizmos mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. incredible stuff. Yeah. If you could pick one f thing from that house for your house, what would it be? Uh, oh, um, hmm. I, can't, I can't think of anything. What, what would it be? Yeah, I mean, we placed Trevor in that house of lots of, of gadgets and gizmos because we wanted him to be in very alien Territory. Territory. Clearly, it's not his kind of world. That ultra modern, ultra concealed stuff. Um, he gets the voice down to a T, though. The, uh, the uh, alarm. Uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Has to. Yes, he manages to work that. Um, uh, yeah. I, I. To be honest, I can't think of anything because because most of the gadgets and and gizmos are are things that you just feel it kind of too much like hard work. You, you, you know why. You know, if you want to open a cupboard, why can't there be a knob on it? You know, <laughs> knobs are great. <laughs> um, but, of course, in that house, they don't have it. You've, you've got to work out how they work. You know, just, you know, what's that? Yeah. Yes. Anyway, yes. <laughs> don't give too much away. <clears throat> um, if you could house it for anyone in the world, who would you choose and why? I can't think of anyone, no. I, I mean, that's a very difficult question. Um, 
I mean, why would I want to have? I, I get a terrible job, uh, so I don't want to have sit for anyone. Thank you. <laughs> you <know. laughs> um, and can you talk us through the process of the bee? Like, how how do you look? Like, what what is it? What was there when you're acting? Uh, yeah, very little. I mean, I tended to have to just imagine it. You know, so I was actually doing well, this a lot. You know, imagining it and sort of crossing my eyes slightly to make sure that I, I was sort of conveying that it was closer. And then, of course. Uh, visual effects would add the B afterwards. Um, so the B is completely computer generated. Uh, I had I was I had an interviewer yesterday who said, and the B, I mean, it's real, isn't it? I mean, it's amazing how how real it is. I thought, I know it isn't. <laughs> it's completely unreal, but it's extraordinarily good. I mean, it's a brilliant piece of visual effects. Um, Absolutely fantastic. So um, I, well, I, I, I know, I worked it out. Uh, we did have a, a puppeteer with a bee on the end of a rod, uh, so that, you know, provided a lot of guidance from, from time to time. But m most of it, actually, I think was me, you know, having just to, just to act like that. Ah, OK. Yeah, yeah. So my favourite scenes were the disco shower scene. Oh, yeah. And oh, when good. they come through the door and... <laughs> Your classic line of "What are you doing here?" Oh yes, do you yes. Have okay. Do you have a favourite scene or a line from the show? Um, I like the stuff around the piano. Yep. I like the stuff around the piano, uh, and I like the when he's stuck in the dog flap, and the dog comes up from the garden. I don't, I don't want to give too much away, yeah. but there's a moment of sort of genuine shock when he lands yeah. somewhere. <laughs> I won't say any more than that. And finally, <clears throat> why do you believe that our viewers will be buzzing about watching Mad vs. B? Well, I don't know. I hope they find it just fun. Um, I have had a lot of people say it's it's a bit stressful to watch because they know that things are going to go... You know, the whole show is about things going wrong. Yeah. And they know that things are going to go wrong and they find it slightly anxiety-inducing that they know it's going to go wrong. And, and the, although I had uh, complaints like that about Mr Bean, about Mr Bean's sketches, because you know with Mr Bean that it's not going to go right. Yeah. You know, and he and his, his obsessiveness is, is going to be the, you know, the, he's going to be the author of his own destruction. Um, but I, I hope it's a, it's a fun, silly thing. And, and it's, um, it's a genuine family show. And there aren't many live-action family shows. You know, there aren't many live-action family movies because, you know, there are children's movies and there are adult movies and, and, and there aren't many hybrid shows which, mm -hmm. which are where, where parents can watch it with children. Yeah. Um, but Man vs. B is, I think, definitely one of those shows. Very, very funny. Mm, good. Oh, 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 I'm pleased you saw it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and enjoyed it. Yeah, that's the most important. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.